To be sure you never miss a Tech Ninja video, tap on the bell icon right next to subscribe. Hey, what's up guys? Kevin the Tech Ninja here. And today, even though my dojo is in shambles, today we're gonna talk about the best devices you can buy at any budget. You know, buying a phone right now is very tricky. There are so many great phones from $100 all the way up to a thousand bucks. So today we're gonna talk about the best phones in each category, and this is for early 2018. You ready? Let's talk about some phones. This video was made possible by Pulse. Pulse is an in-home repair service for your mobile device. They send out certified phone repair techs to fix your Samsung, Apple, or Pixel phone. All the work has a lifetime guarantee, and for Samsung and Pixel, OEM parts are used. Details are linked down below. Pulse.com. At $100, you can get a lot of good picks, but my favorite one is the Moto E4. This one retails for $130, but if you get the one with Amazon advertisements on the lock screen, it's $100. And if the advertisements aren't too obtrusive to you, I do recommend going that route to save 30 bucks. It looks a lot like the flagship budget Motorola G5, but it tones down quite a bit in the specification department as well as build quality. You'll find 720p 5 inch IPS LCD display up front, and it does offer good touch response and enough room for multimedia consumption. On the plus size, it is also protected with Gorilla Glass 3 for added wear and tear resistance. Inside, there's a Snapdragon 425 with a quad-core processor clocked at 1.3 gigahertz. And also a Mali T20 GPU, which should be enough power for general browsing, social media, and some lightweight gaming. The two gigabytes of RAM on board is also quite generous and 16 gigabytes of storage with the option to expand to 128 via micro SD card slot. Now it does have some premium things like a fingerprint scanner, which is loved by many people. I won't get a phone personally without one. And there's also a modest eight megapixel camera too, which obviously isn't gonna be the best camera out there, but it's enough to take general photos in well-lit areas. Once you're in a low light setting, pretty much forget using the camera. But if you wanna take general pictures outdoors or just simple photos, you're not really caring about quality, this camera is definitely good enough. And the same thing goes from the front five megapixel camera with the occasional selfie under great conditions, it may turn out pretty good. Now it is packaged with a 2800 milliamp battery and fast charging support. And that will last you pretty much the whole day since the CPU and GPU isn't that power hungry. And for a hundred bucks, you really can't ask for much more. Moving up to $200, it should surprise no one that the Honor 7X dominates this category. I've talked about the Honor 5X, 6X, and now the 7X. There's one reason that the Honor X line is always in this category. For this price point, you're not gonna get a build like this. It's unibody and aluminum, and it's not super unique, but it feels much more expensive. Surprisingly, it does pack that front 5.93 inch 18 by nine full HD plus IPS LCD display and it makes the phone look like it's a 2017 flagship phone from its front. It's protected with Gorilla Glass and because of the size, it actually feels a lot like Huawei's Mate 10 device, which is definitely a good thing. Now the phone does have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but I'm a bit disappointed you still have the older USB and not USB-C. At this point in time, USB-C is pretty much the new standard. So I'm a little bummed to see that Huawei didn't pack it with the 7X. And that's the biggest downfall I can say about this device. It has the Karen 659 octa-core CPU clocked at 2.3 gigahertz, alongside three gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of default storage, which expands via micro SD card slot. Day to day, I don't think browsing social media web pages should give you any troubles and even some pretty decent games. The fingerprint scanner is fast. Huawei makes very fast fingerprint scanners and it is comparable to any other flagship phone when it comes to unlocking. The software that it runs is not nearly stock Android, it's EMUI 5.1 on top of Android 7.1 Nougat. Honor was the first manufacturer to bring dual cameras at this price point with the 7X and they've continued. This phone has that six megapixel RGB sensor, which by no means is bad alongside the two megapixel sensor for those blurry background effects. The eight megapixel selfie snapper is pretty good if you can get past the excessive beauty effects. 
Also, you have a Mammoth 3340 battery. Running it shouldn't be no issue at all, all day battery life and then some. And I guess I forgot to mention, another major sacrifice Honor did was actually leaving out NFC. I don't recall the last time I've used NFC, but it feels like I just need to have it on my phone because that one-off circumstance where I need it, I feel like I'll be missing out on something. But regardless, 200 bucks, this is the phone to get. I may even argue it's good as some $300 phones. Speaking of $300, the Moto G5 S Plus comes to mind. This is an upgrade to the G5 Plus and it just makes it a little bit better. Again, for build, we're looking at that robust brush metal for that sturdy feel in the hand. Now this one isn't as nice as a 7X and it sticks to more of a tamed 16 by nine full HD IPS LCD display at 5.5 inches. Once again, it does have Gorilla Glass 3. Inside, you get the Qualcomm Snapdragon 625 octa-core processor clocked at two gigahertz alongside a powerful Andrino 506 GPU. The phone also comes with three gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, expandable micro SD card slot as an overall package. It is just an overall well-rounded phone. One thing that I do wanna say that's really good about a Motorola is that it actually gives you a stock-like experience of software. And that's really good. As I mentioned before, I love stock-like software and Motorola still provides that for you. And since they provide that stock-like software, you do have a very, very quick phone. It's on the list to get Android Oreo and it's just a very lightweight skin and it does have a couple Motorola features like the chopping motion we've seen before and that adds to some of the value. But one of the best parts out there that at this price range, it has a very decent camera. It has a dual camera lens of 13 megapixels which performs pretty well in day and during night. Whereas the front facing camera, it's eight megapixel with an LED flash that is bonus for night selfies. It does pack that 3000 milliamp battery with fast charging and a drawback to this phone and the one we saw beneath it is that it doesn't have USB-C. Once again, that's a big bummer. But at this price range, I mean, I guess you don't expect to have the latest and greatest of everything. Regardless, for $300, a really great phone by Motorola, which is now owned by Lenovo. But regardless, I think it's a solid, solid phone. Right now, we're gonna make it to the mid-range territory. We're gonna start seeing phones that cost a little bit more, but you're gonna see a benefit compared to the lower budget phones. These phones take it a step further and they're just shy of a full flagship phones. And for under $400, you can get the HTC U11 Life. In the USA, you'll get the Android One variant that sells a little bit more than that on T-Mobile, and I still think the phone is great. This phone comes with that same liquid metal finish that HTC phones are associated with, but instead of that all glass body, this phone is made of a plastic which retains that glossy aspect. The plastic doesn't feel like cheap plastic, it feels premium, so it's sort of a benefit and also a drawback. Benefit, you drop it, it doesn't crack, but the drawback is that you don't get that premium feel in your hand. Anyways, the phone is packed with a 5.2 inch super LCD, full HD screen protected by Gorilla Glass 3. I think it gives you enough room for media consumption and presents a nice form factor, even with the hardware navigation keys and the fingerprint scanner on the front which by the way is very, very fast. Now inside you'll find some standard mid-range specifications and octa-core Snapdragon 650 processor clocked at 2.2 gigahertz alongside the Andrino 508 GPU. You also get three gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, and that storage can be upgraded to 256 with a micro SD card. It's running stock Android, so expect it to look good, run good, be fast, and also be slated to get some updates. It doesn't have a headphone jack, but they do provide some pretty solid headphones if that's something that you want to use. They are noise cancellation as well, but you don't have the headphone jack. But you do have water resistance at IP67. On the back, you'll find only a single camera unit. Like every HTC flagship so far, it's 16 megapixels that tapes really, really sharp looking pictures, but its shutter speed is pretty slow. The 16 megapixel front camera also does well to capture detail and the overall package would do good for sharing pictures on social media. A downside to the phone though is the lack of fast charging support and a smaller than usual 2600 milliamp battery. Either way, I found that the phone should last a full day, but if you're a power user, you will be charging it up, I'd say a little bit in the afternoon or at night, you may be reaching for that charger. 
And with that, things get very interesting and this is where the most debates happen when you're talking about $500 phones because this competition definitely heats up here. At under $500, there is only one phone you should consider and that is the OnePlus 5T. It's made of an aluminum frame with a back that is identical to OnePlus 5, but the difference is in the front. You'll find that six inch AMOLED display rocking that 18 by five aspect ratio. It's protected by Gorilla Glass 5 and presents a generous amount of screen real estate for media consumption. People are saying it's only full HD for battery life, but there's also rumors that AMOLED screens right now are only at 1080p and the higher screens cost a lot more to produce and thus the phone will cost more money. Regardless, it actually looks pretty good. You can't tell the difference. Only when you're watching a video, hit the box and see what resolution you can watch the video in. Under the hood, the phone packs the best processing power available right now. An octa-core Snapdragon 835 processor clocked at 2.45 gigahertz. Alongside the Andrino 540 for graphic processing. And with this kind of power, anything you do on your phone, it will run just fine high-end games, intensive applications, multitasking, all that stuff's gonna run perfectly fine. So performance is not even something you should even look at. And also it does have six gigabytes of RAM for whatever reason, it's just good. Now, as far as cameras are concerned, it's a slight change from the OnePlus 5. You don't get the 2X lossless zoom with this one, but everything else remains identical. A 16 and 20 megapixel sensor at the back with portrait mode support whereas the front has a 16 megapixel sensor for selfie. In all honestly, I think the camera performs very well in many scenarios with good color, but pictures come out a bit softer and dynamic range seems to be a bit lacking in pictures. That aside, dual SIM support is an added bonus for everyday use with 3300 milliamp battery. There should be no problems with battery life, and if there is, you do have a dash charging, which is the fastest charging available. Plug it in for 15 minutes, and you get hours of battery life, and you can't find that anywhere else. So far, we've been talking about phones at budgets, but now, let's discuss phones. If you have a limited budget, we can buy whatever phone you want, you've got the money, and things like that. What phone will you buy? I don't think I'll be surprising anyone at this point to be honest, but we're gonna dig right into it. Starting with iOS, we obviously don't have many choices, but the iPhone X is gonna be my choice. You get the 5.8 inch AMOLED display with the notch at the top that takes care of Face ID, a new way to unlock the phone. It means you don't have to use the fingerprint scanner nor the Touch ID home button, and there's a whole lot of different ways to interact with your phone and swipes and gestures. And with the iPhone, it has this glass backing, which is very similar to like the Galaxy uh, S8 or the Note line, which is very slippery, gets nasty fingerprints on it all day. So on the iPhone, I rock the red dragon skin. Hit the link below, throw that red dragon skin on your phone, protect those nasty fingerprints in it from slipping out of your hand, and also have a unique looking phone. Hit the links down below to debrand your iPhone. If you wanna know more about the iPhone and what I think about it, hit the link down below or the card up top where I made a video talking about my long-term usage with it. Inside you'll find Apple's all Bionic GPU alongside three gigabytes of RAMs and storage options starting at 64 gigabyte. Software-wise is iOS 11, which is a little restricting as a whole and a little bit buggy too, but overall works very well. As I said before, make sure you watch my full video where I discuss it. I just released a video, a long-term usage video. Hit the link down below, hit the card up top or the end card at the end to see it. And for Android, has to be the Pixel 2 XL. I still love this phone. I know it had a very rocky start, a rough start if you will, but if you bought a phone after the update, then you'll realize that this burn-in issue is gone completely. And that was the main problem I had with the phone was the burn-in and screen shifting issues. The colors do shift a little bit, but overall the camera and stock light performance wins me over every day. If you wanna know more about the Pixel 2 XL or the Pixel, I released some videos too. I'm linking those down below. Anyways guys, I'm Kevin the Tech Ninja. If you're still watching the video, write in the comments, banana, 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 so I know you're still paying attention. Are you paying attention? Anyways guys, I'll talk to you later. Peace.
tell a friend to tell a friend that it's him again. Hey, yo, real talk, opinions gon' be sharper than 4K. Scope squad, eat it up, sim it and saute. Ninja got reviews and brands galore. You ain't never seen a channel like this before. No hashtag.